I was properly greeted by a fellow Toss who really opened the, the book of cheese for me. Okay, all right, let's see how this goes. In the bottom right, the subscriber, Overman, as a Zerg. In the top left of Curious Minds, we have Kowalski. Protoss player who uh, apparently opened the book of cheese. We do have a high ground pylon, but then we have a double gas. Well, that's not usually what you do against Zerg. Well, it's not what you usually do against anyone, actually. No, this build actually makes no sense. This build makes no sense. <laughs> I was gonna say it's not—it's not a build at all, but uh, you know, a lot of gas. You would at least say for maybe a proxy Stargate versus Terran, you could kind of see that process, that that thought process, and it'd still be a bad build. It'd be very inefficient, but it, it's a cannon rush. You actually don't need much gas that quickly. Eventually, you do because eventually a cannon rush turns into a Stargate or a Robo, right? But um, yeah, not exactly the most efficient, but that doesn't necessarily matter. Doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, the There is a certain strength that comes with a properly lined up cannon rush. If it hits hard and fast type of situation. But there's also kind of a strength in being complete surprise. And since Overman is not typically a Zerg player, this is probably what's going to kill him the most. Uh, especially as a growing Zerg player, I think this is the worst for Zerg players, is learning how to defend all the cheeses and what the fuck's happening type of games. I think that's the most difficult part of learning Zerg. The other races, you know, especially like Terran, we have walls, we can build SCVs and units, we don't have to pick and choose. Protoss, kind of a ditto situation. A little more of just, you know, spur spurts of unit production with warp gates, but still. Uh, but Zerg? It's, uh, it is a lot of reacting, and if you're just sitting there constantly confused, you don't know how to make drones, spines, lings, roaches, I don't know, then you're gonna die doing probably nothing. So this, this actually shouldn't be that scary, you know? It, it, this actually, I, um, this actually makes, again, zero sense. It makes zero sense. Unfortunately, the ling run by doesn't work out, there's a cannon that, that happens, but that the Protoss' side makes zero sense. Because there's no reason to really cannon rush a Zerg's main because the creep is already out. You, you can't you can't actually threaten the Zerg player, right? So either, you know, Overman, you know, you could take this as me teaching you, but I just want to get out there for every other Zerg player on the planet who who maybe has trouble with similar things. You're not threatened, you know? Like, in general, in general, for anyone who struggles against cheese and weird shit, really think about what's under threat, right? So, if a Zerg situation, you're not under threat by cannons because they can't reach anything important. They can't reach your hatchery, they can't reach your drone line, you know, so you, you can sit there and you can build up links, you can get a roach worm probably before it actually turns kind of scary. Build up lings, queens, you can get spine crawlers if you want, and then you, and then you can flood them. You can, just, you can just attack them, because there's also not really any sim city that's working out for them. All these unit, all these structures would be partially surrounded, if not entirely surrounded. Um, so the worst, situ the worst case situation for a Zerg player here is to, to overreact, basically. Is to go, oh my god, cannons in my main! I need, to, I need to build everything, and then I'll proceed to not do anything. You know, they, they build the spines, they build the lings, they build a roach horn, and then they just let this continue on. They don't break it, they don't get a strong economy. So, that's unfortunately what's kind of happening right now. A lot of spine crawlers were made that were, uh, you know, they're not gonna help. Because <laughs> we do have a transfer, a transition into Stargate. So the spine crawlers are especially not helpful. Perhaps if it was a immortal follow-up, they would be time buyers, but still. So this is, uh, this is just unfortunate. It didn't, uh, didn't have to be this way, but that's, that's the real crux of the issue for a lot of cheese. Just keeping your calm and actually knowing, you know, what, what to expect and what works and what doesn't work against it. Overman kind of has the right idea now. Get a bit of a stronger economy. And then get into some type of anti-air, which in this case is going to be reliably queens. Queens are the most reliable thing. Queen, Roach, Ravager would be a beautiful way to defend this, because the Ravagers would take out the cans and the shield batteries and the Queens, they'll survive. 
They'll survive. Queens are sturdy. Especially if you've been building them up for a while and they got some transfuse. So... Usually, uh, to be honest, as a Zerg player, if you're a Zerg player out there, building queens is almost never not the answer. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's usually a good thing to do. Sport crawlers are helpful, and in fact, Kowalski showing some E-level micro here is, is really helping. Lots of weak void rays, one already dead. Spire, ooh, that is a very dangerous thing to go for. Very dangerous. Spire... If you go into Corruptors, Void Rays are supposed to counter them, so you better have a lot of economy behind going into the Corruptors. Because you're facing Void Rays and Shield Batteries and Cannons. So you're gonna need a lot of Corruptors. And then if you go for Mutas, well, that it could actually work in a base race situation. I mean, this probe line's completely vulnerable. It would really struggle if you deal with cannon shield battery. The void rays wouldn't kill the mutas all that fast, but they also wouldn't die to the mutas, and the mutas would have a tough time killing a static defense. Not that corruptors would be any better. <laughs> they, would, they would also struggle with that. But uh, yeah, probably again best composition against what happened here: Queen Ravager. Second best composition probably Roach Hydra. But something on the front lines to protect your growing number of vulnerable units. So roaches protect the vulnerable hydras because you really can't get that many hydras. But this is this is unfortunately gone all topsy turvy real quick. And it happens, man. It happens. It's so easy to. Like I'm saying all of this as if there is the playbook. You there's a little cookbook, one, two, three, four. Oh, you missed step four, that's why it tastes like shit. Not exactly, right? <laughs> like, we all, we've all been in positions where we even know what to do, and we still fuck something up. You know, we don't build an overlord, so we're supply blocked at the exact wrong moment. Like, it happens, but unfortunately, this was just a bit of, a bit of panic to the, to the beginning, and then the, the, the middle and end don't look so hot received. either. Apparently you are doing something right, Captain. Merry Christmas, guys. Thank you, JW, for the 17 months. So again, the mutas would not be a terrible idea for a base race. And certainly one thing you can check is that if the probe line isn't defended, and then if you saw the probes recalled, you know there's a hidden base. <laughs> Which, it's not too surprising to see. But the mutas can't really deal with the army head-on. They're just, they're harassing units. They're not meant to take care of big ol' armies. It's a very awkward situation. Very awkward. Probably a losing situation. I'm not sure how Overman gets out of this one. Um, if if the Zerg was fully saturated on two bases, 32 drones on minerals, right? 12 drones on gas. He might be able to afford a decent Yuga army, but only on 26 workers. That's uh, it's not going to work out so well. There's not alignment, not helpful against any of the units, is helpful against the spores, so I'll forgive it for now. I'm not certain that's actually what he was thinking, but whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, now I think government's realizing, oh, those mutas didn't really work out. I'm gonna try corruptors, but corruptors are so expensive. It is, it is not easy to get to. The other thing that could have worked, once you realize, maybe you're in the main base, you realize, oh shit, like, I can't stop this from happening. If you have that oh shit moment, this is one of those situations where playing whack-a-mole is not bad. As in, you're the mole. As in, you're just like expanding everywhere and droning. Wouldn't be too terrible, because void rays really are garbage when they're away from shield batteries. So, if you're building a queen count, I suppose, and roaming around the map, that might not be a bad idea. Void Rays would still have the mobility because Queens are really slow off of creep. Yeah, that's true, but it could have been a thing. Especially if Kowalski is is very single-minded. If, if he was like, yeah, I killed the main. Oh, okay, now I do. What do I do now? See, now creep for between these bases would have been extremely helpful, but you're going to see if the Void Rays do engage, that they're going to struggle. Not so much against the Corruptors, especially if they have prize prismatic alignment, but the Queens, too. Yeah. Not that impressive. Not that impressive. 
Unfortunately, no sport crawlers to help over here, but the queens finally shake their booties. They don't even kill drones that fast. Void rays really have two powerful moments in their lives. The beginning, when there's very little to defend them in the first place, they're all right. Oh, and so when they have shield batteries as well, they're pretty good. And at the end, when there's enough of them that they are scary. In between, and away from shield batteries, yeah, really not that great. Unfortunately, these corruptors just not high enough in number. Funnily enough, Kowalski is going into a unit that could backfire. Now again, Overman really needs a stronger economy to get into corruptors, but carriers do not counter corruptors. They can be okay against them, especially because these carriers are going to have 1-1. One, one, or they have 1-1. One, one. They're about to pop with 1-1. One, one. Order is taken down. Uh, but usually, if you knew the Zerg player was going to go Corruptors, then you would go for Voidress. That's 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 actually the balancing act here. So by going into carriers, it kind of increases his chance that Overman will get enough Corruptors. Will get to, let's say, 15 Corruptors. going to be a long time. There's not much economy to work with, but could get to 15 Corruptors. Start one-shotting the carriers somehow. Even with the shield batteries going. Uh, and then... And then Kowalski's the one in trouble. But Kowalski... Still, you know, another base up and running. The upgrades. Yeah, could start plus two. There he goes. Like, still should have this game, but... The single-mindedness of it as well might be what really kills him. Oh, the Corruptors trying to go for that base race. Going for the Sermon X4 would not be a bad idea here. But going for the Nexus, obviously, is the best situation. It's already mined out quite a bit, but still a good thing to target fire. There you have it. And the, car and the carriers aren't really going to kill things very quickly. Not, not yet, anyways. Not until they're higher numbers. They're not going to kill these Spore Crawlers very quickly. In fact, they're probably going to have to recharge the Interceptors at least once. Nexus goes down. Cannons at this point kind of wasted. Fortunately, the Cybernetic Score might go ahead and finish that plus two, which is insanely beneficial for Interceptors, but... And if they can choose. Yeah, they have... I mean, these carriers have killed... They've killed one Spore? And, they, and they're all... Like, they're at a comically low number of Interceptors already. So this is the problem. This is a real problem. <laughs> and if the carriers are low in Interceptors and... Yeah, even, even on the shield batteries, they can't actually stop this Corruptors. It was a slow trickle of very expensive units, but it has come to enough to kill carriers. If Overman... Sorry, if Kowalski had continued building Void Rays, and then swapped to carriers, so let's say six Void Rays, and then into carriers, or, you know, kept his initial Void Rays alive, because he built nine of them. Let's say all of those are alive, and then adds on carriers? Yeah, Overman's definitely dead. But this, this transition after losing what actually kills the Corruptors is going to kill Kowalski. The Corruptors are sharking around for the remaining Nexus. Seeing the probes go a different direction, seeing no pop-up. Hey, everyone's been revealed. They knew about it. And they're going to be able to kill it. Nothing to really stop. They could recall the carriers, but then they'd die. Carriers wouldn't win this. This was... Uh, <laughs> Severely mishandled by Kowalski, but also kudos to Overman for, you know, kind of get, getting grounded eventually. Eventually getting his feet underneath him and kind of keeping cool, despite losing the entire main base. Which, by the way, has a nexus. So we're not a nexus yet. Carriers at plus two, one, which would be so damn scary. But there's not enough of them. They're not protected. It's four, cur four carriers versus 12 corruptors. And the upgrades are good. The, the fact that the shield battery is very good. Still might not be enough. Overman. Uh, maybe. Maybe four spliners are on right now. Not actually spending all the money that supply the larva. Uh, it's a bit of an issue, a bit of an issue. We had ourselves kind of a stalemate. No one really wants to push into each other. Ooh, Overman. Oh, he's gonna go for the snipe. He's gonna go for the snipe. 
Snipe in the Nexus is happening, and Kowalski's not responding, man, and he doesn't have enough minerals for another Nexus. Oh my god, if he had responded faster. Even if he had responded faster, I think actually the Nexus is still dead, but at the very least, we would have been able to take out a couple more Corruptors before they fly away. Three Corruptors, not bad. Eh, usually, right? Because it was for free. As far as the Interceptors and the Carriers are involved, but it wasn't for free because the Nexus died. The only Nexus that was available. And you know that's the only Nexus available as they continue to be revealed. The Carrier is now desperately trying to clear out the Natural, but the Natural was one problem. It's still not... It wasn't the only problem. The Spore Crawlers weren't the only problem. There's still a decent number of air units here. 15 Corruptors coming in. One Carrier going to be killed before reaching back to the Shield Batteries. And the Shield Batteries and Cannons are still troublesome but a second carrier goes down for not that many air zerg unit losses a couple mutas maybe one corruptor and overman could still play this out as far as playing the whack-a-mole just build hatcheries and drones another carrier goes down kowalski somehow losing this game i don't think really quite understood what makes sky toss good gg well played way to keep your cool